You're still watching Nigeria Decides on Plus TV Africa. Next up, we will be discussing the anti-corruption fight. And at this point, we are joined by Aditu Kumbo Mumuni. Good to have you. It's a pleasure being here. Now, let's start off with this speech by President Muhammad Buhari. He said, at his inaugural speech in 2015, we shall strongly battle yet another form of evil that is even far more worse than terrorism, the evil of corruption. Corruption will not be tolerated by this administration, and it shall no longer be allowed to stand as if it is a respected monument in this nation. Now, in your scorecard, do you think President Muhammad Buhari has ticked all of these, this is, uh, this is, his tenure is over, literally. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Let me say straight away that um, when you discuss or you attempt to confront human problem, national problem, and of which corruption is one, you have to factor in the totality of the human nature, the totality of the Nigerian human nature before you start making pronouncements as to what you want to do. So I think what the president thought when he was coming in, granted he contested for the post the fourth time. He contested in 2000 and, um, 2007. Exactly, yes. 2011. 11, 15. Then, then 15. 2015. Yes. So I think those statements shows that the enormity of the problem that he has to come and confront is not known to him. He now got into the place. I now saw that this problem is more and too pervasive than he thought. Well, now, one of the things that strikes us is the um, response from Fed, uh, Frederick, late Frederick Fascio, mm -hmm. who said the president ought to slow down in his attack against corruption. He had to take his time, understand what he was fighting against, mm -hmm. and then to be able to have a way forward, especially in the anti-graft war. But there have been other sharp criticisms that have come against the president that mm -hmm. his fight against corruption is lopsided, is selective. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's mm -hmm. the reality? Let me, let me tell you straight away that those who say the fight against corruption is lopsided or selective, let me take it from the political perspective from where that statement is coming. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to deal with people that have had the opportunity of occupying public office, that has had the opportunity to, to manage and deal with government money, you will definitely focus on people that have tasted power. We look at the likes of Ali Modu Sharif, uh, uh, Sanusi Lamido also exposing some parts of illegal oil deals, as well as um, the Dasuki Gate and Meina as well. Let me, let, me, let me finish. You see, for those on the other side of the political divide, mm. people that want to take power in 2019, mm -hmm. I believe that what they are saying is expected. Because the only category of people that could possibly be accused of preferring a young money are people that have tasted power and they are in PDP. So if you say nothing is happening to the APC members, you see, let them do what they want to do in terms of political campaigning and be able to get power in 2019 so that they will now focus on those that have gain control of administration under APC and we start having it. Okay. You see, unless we look at the thing on the basis of is there an offense committed? Mm -hmm. If offense has been committed, is there evidence that this offense has been committed? If that is so, I don't believe that the fight against corruption is lopsided. That is expected. But then we've also had um, highly revered groups like the Christian Association of Nigeria coming yes. out to also say that the fight of, against corruption has not been transparent enough, that we don't even know what strategy let, the let, president let, is advancing let, let, let me, in Let the fight. me say something about this highly revered group that you're talking about. You see, when the PDP was in power, we know what religious people did. We had of a, past, a pastor involved in arms deal 
taking planes loaded with currency. We had of traditional rulers receiving money from the government of the day. So I don't, I don't, I don't see anybody as referred. Once you have tainted yourself with the toga of indecency, so I don't, I don't, I don't consider anybody as referred. My problem is once you say these are the laws of Nigeria, is either you obey those laws. Or you forget about it. Okay, um, David, let me also ask this before you take it up. Because when you, the first thing you said was yes. that the president did not really appreciate the enormity yes. of what he was coming yes. to yes. face. Yes. Okay, but of course we know that he, he was a military leader at some point. Yes. And of course, the, his stance against corruption is not new. Yes. So can we say that it is, are you trying to say that it is Nigeria that has the problem and not the president that doesn't really know how to do it? His job. Good. <laughs> that was quite a smile. No, 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 good. Good. The reason why, let me say straight away that the reason why Nigerians voted for Buhari to become the president of Nigeria is based on his antecedents, his no nonsense character. But Nigerians have forgotten that when you are operating under a military regime, mm -hmm. when it is do it as I wish. Things get easier done than when it's a collegiate thing. There are three levels of government in a, in a democracy. The legislators, the constitution grant, grants them power under section four. The executive, the constitution grants it power under section five. The judiciary, the constitution grants it power under section six. So we have a tripod Exactly. Arrangement. Yeah, well, Mr. So Rooney, I believe you still have a whole lot of stock to share with us, but we have joining us now Alistair Wilcox, is a public affairs analyst. We'll take a short break and the conversation continues. Don't go away. Okay. You're still watching Nigeria Decides on Plus TV Africa. Earlier on, we talked about the violence that marred the APC inaugural rally in Lagos. And then we moved on to the anti-corruption fight. We've been talking with Adeto Kumbo Mumuni, and we're joined now by Alester Wilcox. Good to have you. Oh, it's nice to be here. Uh, happy New Year to the esteemed listeners. Thank you Thank very you. much for joining us. Yeah. Yes. Now, we would like to take some look at three issues that raise the brows of every Nigerian. The first one was the Dasuke Gate and the inexplicable disbursement of um, funds from the Office of the uh, National Security Advisor. We would also like to look at your response. Do you think it took far too long for the president to sack Babacher Lawal? And lastly, the riddle and the whole uh, main nuggets. Okay. Your reaction, Mr. Oh, well, they're, they're all uh, loaded. Uh, if I, start, I have to start with Dasuki. Um, it was obviously clear that uh, during the last dispensation, the administration, uh, there was brazen uh, act of, in fact, unknown to Nigerian uh, uh, system or psych that um, public funds would just be removed from the treasury, just brazenly, without any uh, paper. No, I mean, normally when we know corruption in this country, it's okay, you issue contracts, you inflate those contracts, or you issue contract and it's not done, or you display the contract, you take your kickback. I mean, some things go along. But in this Dasuki Gate, it's a show you whereby there was no contract, nothing, just by mere paper, two point, is this $2.1 billion? Two point two. Two billion dollars was removed from CBN and the missiles in cash in the office of the NSA. So that is brazen and very, very, uh, so, and of course, that was always very, very easy to trace. And uh, when this comment came in, they, that was the first uh, uh, that, that was the first area they, 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 they went into. But again, you, one was okay. Since all this fire, what has happened? What has been the result? Uh, it is the executive that will uh, bring this into the fore. It's the executive that will investigate. It's the executive that will take to court. It, the court that will, will decide. At the end of the day, what happens? And we know in this country how the window of justice grants. And what about uh, Babacho Lawal? Do you think it took far too long for him to be no, sacked? No, no, but Babacho Lawal, you see, unfortunately, a lot of people will make misconceptions about Babacho Lawal's issue. Uh, Babacho Lawal's issue borders really on the 
ethics. Uh, I don't know the level of criminality that's involved, but it's more ethical than, for me, more ethical than criminal. Now, Everybody conflict, raised brows about conflict, a year into office yes. and then mm -hmm. a conflict, whole lot of Conflict of through. interest. Uh, a man who occupies a position, uses that position to award a contract to himself or his company or an interest he has. That is the issue, the case of Bachelawa. Now, um, the, it was raised by the House, by the Senate that investigate the issue, maybe trade with two blow, whatever, and then they ask the president to sack Obachia. Of course, he did, I wouldn't say it took long. The president, we know him, is somebody that is <clears throat> always thorough in doing his. He doesn't take in spontaneous actions. He goes through the whole hog. Remember, at the time the issue came up to the press, to the, of, I mean, to the news of the president through the house, he set up an investigative panel headed by the vice president to investigate the issue. And the vice president investigated the issue. Okay, investigate the issue. Now, at the point where the vice president was involved, Pacha was sent on, on, on suspension. Mm -hmm. And by the time the report was getting ready, the president fell sick and was away to the, uh, uh, to the UK. But do you remember for treatment. the statement he made during that suspension? Who is the presidency? Yes, I've been asked this question several. When, uh, he, he didn't make it during the suspension, he made it during when there's an alter, uh, altercation, yeah, altercation with the Senate. Yes, exactly. Now, they said, Who is the presidency? Now, as, and in, in one program, I was asked, What do I make of that statement? I said, Yes, the presidency is different from the president. <laughs> now, in the presidency, the president is an individual, head uh, heads the presidency. He's the president. The president has the office of the uh, secretary of the federal government, the chief of, office of the chief of staff, the office of the national security advisor, and some other ancillary offices. That is the presidency. Now, you don't take a document to the president. Mm. If you send a letter to the president, it must get to the office of the secretary of the federal government. Now, Alistair, let's have a reaction from Mr. Mumuni. You seem to be nodding your head. <coughs> you see, <coughs> everything must be put in proper context. Like uh, my brother said, I believe that um, the president is not a person that when he receives an information, he takes prompt action. We should know him by that. He takes his time to take action. That is his own style. We know, th we know that some people, they act with much more dispatch. No problem. But eventually, Baba Shalawal has, has not been a part of this government for at least the, the past one year now. One and a half. One and a half years. Now, the next question is, if allegations are made or found dangerously against a person, a government that says, I'm fighting corruption, should now proceed if there are admissible, legally admissible evidence against such person. That, to me, is what we have not Received. It raised mm -hmm. our eyebrows. Good. That is what we have not received from the vice president who investigated the matter, mm -hmm. or the president to whom the report on the matter was submitted to say, okay, we have examined it. We now have legally admissible evidence. We take him to court. That should be what Nigerians should ask the president for. Okay, now uh, let us talk about the EFCC and the ICPC, yes. their role in this, because we know that they are supposed to investigate and then unravel some of these issues so yes. that everybody knows, oh, we are being transparent about what we are doing and these are the stages that it has to go through. Mm -hmm. There are lots of cases pending before the EFCC and the ICPC, and I want you to react to how the EFCC and ICC has aided the fight against corruption so far. Now... You see, once a body exists and it is created by law, you don't act except according to the law that created you. That is, the, that is what I know and that is what legality means. That is what due process means. Now, before the EFCC, normally, before the EFCC can act, mm -hmm. there has to be a complaint from somebody. And I see PC too. Yeah. There has to be a complaint from somebody. Now. Let us say there is no complaint. There, can, there is no basis for acting. That is the law that I know. For example, if you want the FCC to act on a matter, you submit a petition to the FCC, making certain, certain allegations against certain people. That is the basis upon which they act. But now that this Babasha Lawal matter and a lot of matters 
have been in, under, in, under, in the public clear. It is in the manner of speaking, talking about the American system or the British system, anti-corruption agency will act independently of the people. But do you think uh, uh, ICPC of people, or EFCC are truly independent in their treatment of all of these allegations, investigations, and ensuring that we have full proof to show that, yes, this goes beyond that alleged misappropriation of fund or corruption? Good. Unless we want to pretend as if the bodies that handle corruption in Nigeria are independent, we know that when matters involve people that they deem close to the people in power, it is not now. They accused um, Ribadu of being a, an attack dog of Obasanjo. So it is not now that this toga of lack of independence has started showing. Mm. It is being part of what we have been, been contending with all this while. So that is why people will say when you want to fight corruption, you reform the system and institutions so that you don't need a powerful man to drive the process. Mm -hmm. When the institutions are powerful, they would regulate and they work. <coughs> Alistair, okay, your reaction. Yes. Definitely. How powerful are institutions in Nigeria today? Rate over 10? No, no, uh, over 10. I will, I will still rate them. Uh, well, I'll be fair. I'll Do we say, even have institutions in the fair. first place? No, you see, to, and the one thing handle. that we should understand, mm. I, I will rate them 5 over 10. Uh, that's maybe 5.5 over 10, because I, will, I, 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 I want to be as fair as possible. We have come a long way where even where the, the institutions seem to be independent. We still do not accept their independence. Yes. We still tag them to be uh, 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 stooges, directors from above. Yes. Mm. For instance, this is your bachelor. Um, every day they keep saying the president is not aligning them to. I mean, the president is shielding his people over time. And if anybody knows President Muhammadu Buhari, even when he was a military head, head of state, he's somebody that. Does do it doesn't interfere in so many things. I don't know, even those who know him personally. And that was why he was able to be, to be uh, overthrown just like, just as easy as it was. Yeah. Because he allows people that are responsible in, uh, to their job to do their job while he does his own. Yeah. For instance, at that time, the entire army structure in, in 1984, 85, yeah. the entire military structure was in the hand of Babangida. Yeah. He had no control. And then he just does his job as the head of state, takes it, no, that, that he likes building, building institutions. Because even yesterday when he was talking about, he said, I called the commission, the minister for, for agriculture and dialogue with him on what, and then told him, go and do what yes, we have. Yes. yes. So he's, he's that kind of a person. So but you see, when we keep saying he, he shields, yes, there may be elements within the, System because yes, let, let's face but one fact. I'm coming. I'm Let me, let's face one fact. We have we have not arrived. We in in Africa as a whole, in Nigeria as particular, we've not arrived at that point where somebody distances himself from the society. Just like a police commissioner that knows you hmm. and you have a case, it doesn't take the days to tell him to stress softly. Yes, you understand. That's true. We so have that like in its nature. Yes, it's an in its nature mm -hmm. for that to happen, even though nobody is. Prompting you to do such things, do you understand? So, but there is a difference between prompting to. There is a difference between doing what is right and yeah. doing what is expected, and that's the line we are saying with thread that we are doing what our innate nature tells us to do. And until yes, and until we keep, you see, room is not built in a day. Until we keep building this institutional institutionalization of our national life, keep hampering on it. We will not get anywhere. Let, 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 me just, let me just give this. Sorry, I know time is tight. Let me just say this. You see, we talked about, we were talking about true federalism, true federalism, true federalism, one true federalism, true federalism. How many people, journalists, press, analysts like us, talk about what happens in the States? No, who knows, if I ask, if I ask now even their viewers, who know the budget, let's leave Lagos, who know the budget of their home states? Meanwhile, the amount of power that domicile in states, mm. 
We don't talk about it. We don't even know. We don't even bring it to fore. Are you talking about federalism? So okay. we are uh, inadvertently we just like to, to trouble issues. Mm. But in terms of nitty gritty and getting these mm -hmm. issues to the fore, we just. Just bandy around. Yeah, we don't bandy around it. I would like to ask you this, Ade Tokumbo. Um, talking about institutions, you know, I think institutions should go beyond having buildings, having people heading certain structures. Yes. Do we have structures that go beyond a certain administration so that irrespective of who is in power, they are independent? Shouldn't we get to that point where we're talking about achieving that? That is the point in building this institution. So that what I what 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 we mean when we say in building institution is that no matter the person that you assign to head the posts, the structures are there to handle any infraction of the system. If we say two plus two it must be five, mm -hmm. let's say that is the law in Nigeria. So that it, be, it, be, it, it is fine for everybody. Has the Buhari administration done that? No, oh, you see, institutions are not built in a day. That I know. And because the Buhari that I had known since 1984, I was not too small in 1984. I was not. Yeah. The Buhari that I know does not interfere in people's work. He doesn't even use influence. He doesn't like peddling influence. Okay, Mr. Momone. And a lot of people that have dealt with him personally have come to make this. He seems to have marked a good record there in your books, but now the, he reeled out his anti-corruption strategy um, in July 2017, more than two years after he assumed office, and now that was the National uh, Anti-Corruption Strategy 2017 to 2021, which wasn't adopted by the Federal Executive Council until July 2017, mm -hmm. two years into his government. Did that tell you he seemed to be ready to tackle corruption? You see, when you deal with people in a democracy, you can have it as you would. He had this plan of action and he seemed determined like he knew what the, he was doing. You see, for example, for example, a lot of legislations are in the National Assembly. It is not Wari's business to pass legislation. So. Exactly. It is not. So when you do your bit, as part of a tripod, the other part of the tripod, the legislature and the judiciary, must also be ready to do their bit. That is what democracy is about. It's different from Buhari of 1984, where everything lies in the hand of the Supreme Military Commander, where you can say, this is my decision, it goes ahead. It doesn't go that way in a democracy. If Nigerians want to say, Buhari is working, but Nigerians will be the one to say this man is dictatorial. It is not, it doesn't go that way. It's either we want to practice democracy and democracy should be practiced, or we want a dictatorship. And this is not a dictatorship. You see, we have seen somebody rule Nigeria for eight years. He is from Western Nigeria. The way he was sponsoring impeachment of governors. <laughs> have you ever seen that happen in Buhari's regime? It's not. So that to tell you that the man is now a converted demo Democrat, unlike somebody who was sponsoring impeachment willy really against governors. You know, you know who I'm talking about. We understand that. Now, Alistair, let's also take a look at um, the role of the judiciary yeah. and the fight against corruption. One of the statements by Vice President Yemi Oshibajo says that a judiciary can be a corrupt institution. You can set a thief to catch a thief, <laughs> but if a corrupt judiciary is in place, you cannot help strongly battle corruption. What does we this saw, uh, think We saw that play out in several cases. And just like, just to bring up my brother, just said before I, before I, before I dive into that, but, uh, President Barama has, has made it clear in every forum that he talked about corruption. He said, when I was a military man, I arrested from the president, the vice president, everybody, I put them in jail, and I tell them, go and prove their innocence. And we know how those errors happened. 21 years was coming, and 21 years the president was dishing out like a child's play. As a matter of fact, um, uh, Bakunzuo got 180 years imprisonment. Mm. And it didn't take, those cases didn't last more than three, four months mm, in court. court. And you, in fact, because you are in detention and your case is being tried, you are eager to for this case to be dispensed of. Exactly. exactly. You understand? Exactly. So you are eager for the case to be dispensed mm. of, so you know your feet. Mm. Unlike today, where 
the, he said today he's in Agbada Abi. and there is constitution, there is laws he must follow. Mm -hmm. He cannot arrest anybody and put him in jail. Mm -hmm. He, he has cannot. To to court. He, they have to take him to court. And the main court said on bail. You know what happened in this country? The man is on bail. The man fell sick. All the sickness that is that they are they've, that they've never had in their life, they've never been had. They will fall sick <laughs> of that, and then they will go to. He tell them to come to court. They will come to court in stretcher. <laughs> and what will you do? The president, Muhammad Buhari cannot mm -hmm. go there and say, no, come on, get up and take your trial. Or, George, go ahead. And you also know how he tried to, he, he has also talked about the, the judicial, how judges were arrested with raw cash, about two Supreme Court judges, mm -hmm. uh, court of, uh, High Court judges. judges, arrested in the house with stacks of cash. But what happened to those cases? The cases still need to go to co the, the court. And the, sincerely speaking, all those cases have been dismissed. Why? Or technicality said it is not the duty of DSS or EFCC to bring them to court. First, they had to go to the National Judiciary Council. Exactly. Only when the National Judiciary Council has found them guilty okay. that they can be taken to court. Okay. So let me see how clumsy. Okay. So even if a man that wants to fight corruption, I can I caught you and they write your hand in the in the cookie jar, <laughs> held there, and I bring you to the court. And then the court will tell me, no, I am not the one that's supposed to cast you in the cookie jar. Yeah. If I see you in the cookie jar, I should leave you there, call him Ooh, to I come and so catch me exactly. in the cookie jar. <laughs> and then after ensuring that I, it was truly a cookie jar, then it can now deliver to me for me to now bring it. So what will... All the protocol. So can you imagine how clumsy that is? Mm. But again, people have to work with this kind of thing. I mean, the Suki case has remained in court since three years now. Oh, this I met too. A simple case that I caught you with money. This is the money in your account. Wired from NSA office to you and this and this and that. The matter has remained in court. Only family to come to court. His, his, his neck is broken. Today, tomorrow, his leg is this. Next tomorrow, he has diabetes. The other day, he has this. So, and all those things must... He, the president cannot... Mm -hmm. Cannot override any of those... He cannot even, even call the judge and say, Judge, what are you doing? He can't do that. If he does that today... With the kind of hatred they have against this man, it will be all of in fact, the whole world press will carry it because it will be recorded. So he can't do any of those things. So he has had he has his work cut out for him. The problem that now he does is look, let us at least prevent people from those freezing ones. Yes. TSA came in, other um, measures brought BVN. He, he didn't start them, yes. but he saw the the benefit of those measures mm. and he capitalized on them fully. And today. There is a massive reduction, not, not eradication, yes. a massive reduction as to how much people can be corrupt. But let's okay, take a look yes. at between 2015 mm -hmm. and 2018, we yeah. look at countries like Brazil, Peru, South um, Korea. There were instances where their leaders or people of high caliber were caught in the act of be it corrupt practices, malappropriation yes. of funds, or just poor governance systems. Yeah. And they were either impeached, removed from office, or are serving jail terms. Yes, let me tell you something. These are not nations no. that are far above Nigeria. Yes, 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 yes. Let, let, let me just tell you something. Even Israel, Israel, today Prime Minister Netanyahu oh, yes. is, on, is on investigation. Uh, a hood Umar, the last, um, the last one that was impeached. Ehud, that was, Ehud. That, Ehud. No, no, not, I think Umar, something Umar. Um, 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 Umar, yes, Umar, 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 Umar is serving a jail term. A president, one of the presidents is serving a jail term. That is where institutions work. Now, let me tell you the, the, the problem we have in this administration is this. You see, since the advent of Muhammad Buhari, unfortunately, the polarization of the citizenry, the defeat of Jonathan and PDP was a deadly blow that a lot of people have refused to accept that we have a government. It's, everything is bad. Now, if some of the things he mentioned about what a passenger did, I'm, I'm, I can call people's name. He mentioned what about what a passenger did in this country. What is the backlash? How do people complain about it? He impeached Ladoja in a room. He impeached to be. He he impeached in, in, in Gige was arrested in the house. So what was the, what was the backlash? Okay. People just we 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 get over. A passenger brought down Odi, brought down Zakibian. Zakibian, yes. Mm. I mean, what was the backlash? Oh, people shouted, okay, but they are okay, it. But essentially, but let, uh, let Buhari mm -hmm. hmm, do one fifth, even though he has not done. Maybe this hairsmen crisis and everything, 
Let Buhari do one fifth, one tenth of those things that Obasanjo did, impeach people. Do. Mm. Now, they're even arrogating to him things that the man is not even oblivious about. But then, so that is because, I'm to coming, that is because power, the society, he... the society we have today, it's so dangerously polarized because of the hate of that 2015 election. But then, so that is why a Brazilian example cannot work. Okay. If it happens here, mm -hmm. they will say, oh, he's against the opposition. We're actually oh. almost out of time. But then, before the president came to power, he, mm -hmm. of course, anticipated some of this because we know Nigeria is not exactly a nation as it were. We have different nations coming together to yeah, right. make up the Nigeria that we have today. So we know that he anticipated some of these things. Yes. And then if institutions are not working in Nigeria, isn't it essentially the responsibility of the government to get institutions to work so he can work better? And that is why, and, and that's what's happening. That's why you see that things are slow. Because he cannot impose that things are slow. But his tenure is almost over. No, 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 no. You see, whatever milestones he has, he cannot achieve everything. Yes. What about milestone he has reached? For instance, you talked about institutionalization. Look, the governor of CBN, this one he worked with, was appointed by Jonathan. Mm -hmm. He did remove him. Mm -hmm. yes. He continued with him. That is institutionalization. That is because it has a five year tenure. He, 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 the, the tenure of Jega as INEC Boz was ending when he came in. He appointed a new one. This one will at least this four year ten of. Alistair, we have less than three minutes to go now. Mr. Mumuni, let's also take a look at the Treasury single account. We look mm -hmm. at the whistleblower policy. These are initiatives that came that seem to take some sort of shape under the President Buhari administration. Mm -hmm. But one of the questions that keeps on knocking on everybody's mind is at the end of the day, we don't have the dividends of democracy reached in the hands of the average Niger. We look at the Abacha loot, we look at the Ikoi money. What, where are all those recovered funds and when will they be used for the development of the country? But I was part of a gathering of NGO that met the vice president somewhere in Abuja. And that was the question that I put to him. And he reminded me that in the various social intervention programs that they that they they planned, part of those money was part of what is that using. a good enough excuse? No, no, no. You see, if that is the if that is my question, he has answered me yeah. properly. I, I, I tell you something. I tell you something. I just came back from the east. I traveled to I traveled to Putakot by road with my rickety car, and I did eight hours from Lagos to Putakot because the roads were good. Is that not a democracy? Now. The sal Let me tell you, the federal government's pay rule for salaries, federal government salaries, about 140 billion every month. Mm -hmm. And then those money covered are not all federal government money. Some of them go into the, the I mean, going to, uh, some of them are, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, FAC, uh, mm -hmm. federal mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. account. account. Mm -hmm. So some of those money go into federation account and they get back to states that owns them and all whatnot. So not every money that belongs to federal government. So. If the federal government has spent about 2.7 trillion in two budget circles to in, or infrastructure, yes. but what about then, the I boys that we have a dividend of the money and the judiciary to mm. are not their funds are not they continue to operate outside the TSA? What's no, also no, the no 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 no? The, the TSA has some little exceptions. For instance, they have some little exceptions, which of course they they what do you call them? The National Assembly they are an independent arm of the government. The judiciary is the independent arm of the government. Aren't those public institutions? They are both institutions, but again, there must be collaborations and efforts. Of course, today nobody knows what they earn. So that, again, depends on you, the press, and other people to, 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 to keep to. bringing these issues Asking and also questions. support the Sarakis of this world and the Nobelites yeah. of this world that wants to remain perpetually. There are some people who are their clappers. Okay. There are some journalists who are their clappers yeah. and, and make them to be more And involved. finally, just before we wrap up, shouldn't there be accountability and transparency in how all of this recovered loot are allotted? Well, shouldn't we know what is, is where money is going well, into? There's accountability and, and there is. Because those money goes to the budget. Look, you have a budget. Yeah. Take the budget and see the source of funding the budget. There's a budget for the Federation. Yes. There's a source of funding. And some of these loot, some of these recovered money going to that source. And I just give you one. I said the payroll of head of federal government alone, every month is about 140 billion. So do you know that now? No, so do you know what, what I mean, how much have you recovered? If you loot is just how many how many million dollars? Yes. Put that into billions, how much is that? Even if you want to use the house of the pay salary, you can't pay two months salary. And when the government has spent about 2.7 trillion in two years for infrastructure, 
I traveled to Portacourt on a smooth, clean road from Lagos so to Portacourt. It's been an interesting yes, conversation. I think we'll have, we'll have enough dividends. We'll have a good dividend. So I'll continue to have it. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. <laughs> it's Wilcox. It's always a pleasure. Yes. Yes. I did talk about moment. It's Thank been a pleasure joining, speaking yes. with you. It's and the conversation you. continues in just a moment. Don't stay with us on Plus TV Africa. This is our election studio, Nigeria Decides. Remember to follow the conversation on all our social media platforms at Plus TV Africa. That's in Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can also watch us live on YouTube. That's right. And of course, when we come back, uh, the conversation continues. We'll get to talk about electoral violence on a wider scale beyond Lagos. What is going on and what could break out? You never can tell. Just stay, stay with us.